then we have Svalbard. This is a group of islands located between mainland Norway and the North Pole. In fact, it has been given the name as one of the world's northernmost inhabited areas. Just over 2,000 individuals live there. In fact, there's more polar bears living there than humans. And sometimes the bears like to wander into the town. And if you want to leave the outskirts of the town, you have to carry a firearm in defense. You know, just in case one of these bears get hungry and choose to attack. Not only that, but this place has very long days and very long nights. From April to the end of August, the sun never sets. So it's literally sunlight for 24 hours a day. And then during the winter months, you get 24 hours of darkness. Honestly, my sleep schedule would hate me if I lived there. Number nine, USS Lexington, Corpus Christi. Now before I tell you about this spooky ship, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you can catch all of our amazing videos. As a naval vessel that saw actual battle, there have been multiple lives that were lost on board, including that of an engine room operator who still roams the ship at night waiting for the battle to end. The crew of the ship have often reported flickering lights and doors slamming on their own, which given that this is a very well maintained historical site, you'd think that they would have found the cause by now. Maybe it's just the ghosts of sailors lost to time. In our 8th spot today we have Cooper Pedy, Australia. Now I won't lie, this next place is pretty fascinating. So Cooper Pedy is an underground town in Australia. Yeah, you heard me, it's underground, they live underground. Now that's because this area is known for its extreme heat. So back in the day when they didn't have like electricity and fans and air conditioning, miners in the area would remain underground to escape the heat. Then eventually they were like, hmm, what if we just live underground? And that's basically how the town was formed. Currently around 2,000 people live there and it's not just a bunch of homes. No, no, you got a full on hospital and church and shops down there. They also have their own government as well. Now, when you are above ground, they actually have warning signs telling people that there are unmarked holes. So you don't just, you know, fall through someone's chimney and end up in their living room. Not gonna lie though, this place would be really cool to visit. In our seventh spot today, we have Atacama Desert. Some areas in this desert haven't seen precipitation in 400 years. That's how dry it is there. In fact, its soil is drier than any any other on earth. So dry that no organism can live in it, meaning they can't even farm because all crops would just immediately die. With all that being said, this area is home to the Atacamio tribe. They've been living there since before the Inca Empire. In order to survive, farmers laid the horns of freshly killed cattle to attract insects, which then fertilized the land to increase crop yields. Not only that, but they capture moisture using fog nets in order to create water. So it's pretty clever if you ask me. Moving on to number six, we have Dalol, Ethiopia. Now this town has been given the name the Gateway to Hell. And that's because it can reach temperatures of 145 degrees. In fact, due to its heat, it is said to be the hottest inhabited place on earth. One reason why it's so hot is because it sits above an active volcano. It's so hot that if you stand in one place for a few minutes, it could literally melt your shoes. So you might be wondering, if it's so hot, how do people there even survive? Well, they paint their homes and objects so that it will reflect the sun. But as of now, it's a ghost town. No one lives there permanently, but people do go there to visit. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Megingo Island. Megingo Island is a small island located on Lake Victoria, which is the largest lake in Africa. How small is this island, you ask? Well, it's only 2,000 square miles, which if that means nothing to you, it's less than the size of a football field. That's how small it is. But there's still about 500 people living there, and they're mainly fishermen. But since there's so many people living on such a small island, it's incredibly packed. Houses are crammed together and are made from tin and any other material that wash up on their island. Yet, they still manage to find room for four bars and a hair salon. You know, the essentials. Now, the main attraction to this island is that it's home to tons of Nile perch fish. They can catch way more of this fish from this island than anywhere else. It was said that the first inhabitants came to this island in 1991, and that's when the island was only covered in weeds and snakes. Nowadays, it's just overwhelmed with all things fishing related. Coming in at 
number four, we have Kerguelen Islands. Located more than 2,000 miles away from civilization, you got the Kerguelen Islands. These islands are located in the southern Indian Ocean and have been given the name the Desolation Islands. And that's due to how remote they are. Like I said, they are 2,000 miles away from Africa. And the only way you can get there is by a ship. But this ship only operates four days a year. Not only that, but the weather there isn't great. They get rain, sleet, or snow 300 days a year. The only people that dare to live there are French 50 to 200 researchers. And their food and supplies are dropped to them by cargo planes. And in our number one spot today, we have Longyear Buin. This is the world's northernmost settlement. It's located in the Svalbard Archipelago, which we previously talked about. Now, what's wild about this is that they have a very unusual rule if you want to live there. Their rule is no dying. That's right. And this is because of the permafrost and sub-zero temperatures. So it can easily preserve a body, which they really don't want. Also, it's hard to bury bodies there because obviously the ground is frozen. So as a result, people that are dying are flown to Oslo to die there. It's pretty crazy, isn't it? Starting off this countdown, we have the human tongue. Mr. 420 on Reddit shared his terrifying run-in while out walking in the woods. He was 20 minutes into the trail when he saw a small pink slab of meat on the ground. He picked it up being like, what the heck is that? And that's when he realized that it was a human tongue. Now you may be wondering, why did he pick it up in the first place? Well, he said that he saw it and he was like, bro, imagine if that is a tongue and he picks it up and he's like, oh shoot, it actually is a tongue. Like he didn't expect it to be a real tongue. So when he did figure out what it was, he dropped it immediately. That is absolutely disgusting. In our ninth spot, we have Oymyakon, Russia. This town is said to be the coldest town in the world. So next time you complain about the weather, just know that there are people living here and having it 10 times worse. So their average daily temperatures are negative 58 degrees Fahrenheit, which is negative 50 degrees Celsius. This town is so cold that their name literally translates to pole of cold. On top of that, their ground is permanently frozen, so they can't really farm or grow crops. This restricts them to mainly eating raw frozen fish or meat. It also means that they can't have a plumbing system because any water in the pipes will freeze. So they rely on outhouses. And you know how cars tend to die because of the cold? Well, they have to worry about that constantly. In fact, they need to have their cars continuously running if they're outside, or they need to be placed inside a heated garage. Also, if they're outside wandering around, they have to worry about frostbite. They can't have any skin exposed. Currently around 500 people live there, and I don't know why, honestly. Not only is it freezing, but the town faces 21 hours of darkness a day. So talk about depressing. Coming in at number eight, we have the interesting decor. So in 2018, Jim Rooker, a former shipbuilder and worker for the US Navy, shared his interesting discovery when out in the desert. So years ago, he used to live in Las Vegas. He would often take drives out to the desert west of town just for fun. While out for his drive, he saw something off in the distance shining bright at him. Since he worked for the US Navy, his initial reaction was that someone had a mirror and they were using it to send an SOS signal for help. After driving about three miles south to where the light was shining, he found something very bizarre. It wasn't a person signaling for help. No, someone had tied about 100 beer cans to some trees. They were just hanging off the branches and reflecting the sun. So Jim was relieved, but also why would someone do this? Maybe like a DIY wind chimes? I don't know. In our seventh spot, we have the lost jacket. When this next individual was just 10 years old, they were at football training camp with a few of their cousins. The training took place at a camp surrounded by a forest. When their training was done, the boys decided to take a walk along the river while waiting for their parents to pick them up. While out exploring though, they found a really nice jacket floating in the water. So the boys decided to fish it out of the water. However, when they turned it over, so did the man wearing it. The man had no face left. It was completely gone. Now that must have been traumatizing, like seeing such a thing at such a young age, that would completely mess me up for life. Coming in at number six, we have the elusive beast, AKA Mr. Bigfoot. While out camping with his dad, sister, and a couple of his friends, something started harassing them in the middle of the night. 
whatever it was, started to throw rocks and sticks into their campsite. They ended up shining their flashlight over to the area where the objects were being thrown from. And when they did, the light caught a reflection of eyes and a silhouette. According to the narrator, whatever it was, was very, very tall and big. When the beast left, the campers were finally able to get some sleep. But eventually they woke up to heavy footsteps in their camp and to the smell of something horrid. To this day, they don't know what it was that they saw but they believe it might have been the Bigfoot messing with them. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the poop. According to Reddit user EP Ham Radio, when they were younger, they decided to explore an abandoned farm in the Midwest. While exploring it, they found that the upstairs area was just covered in poop. Not only that, but there were tons of claw marks on the walls as if someone was up there trying to escape. Not only that, but when they were exploring the area, they found a strange bag. When they opened the bag, all they could see was human hair. At that point, they were so scared that they ran the hell out of there as fast as they could. They're scared that if they kept looking through the bag, they would have found that the hair was attached to the head of a dead body in that bag. In our fourth spot today, we have the disappearing bunker. This next story was submitted by Warcrow999. According to him, one day he was with his cousin in a rural area about 30 minutes west of Palm Springs in California. So the pair decided to go on a hike about 20 minutes north of an area called Oak Glen. But there wasn't a trail that led directly to the hills that they wanted to climb. So they trespassed onto a campsite and then followed a stream up towards the hills. They were just making their own pathway and believed that it was going to be a shortcut. But as they started climbing the hills, they realized that they had gone too far and the sun was already setting. So they decided to take another shortcut to get down the hills. As they started their descent, they came across a weird 40 foot building with thick concrete walls in the middle of the forest. It looked as if it was a bunker. The windows had bars on them and the door was made out of heavy steel. They both immediately were drawn to the building, but they got bad vibes from it. So they left. Now they did make it home safely but they decided that a couple weeks later they would go back to explore the bunker. However, when they went out to the exact location they had been, the bunker was completely gone, which seems impossible. How could someone move it or destroy it that fast and not leave behind any evidence suggesting that it was once there? Not only that, but apparently when they were hiking, the narrator's wallet fell out of his back pocket. A couple weeks later, his ID showed up in the mail in an envelope. There was no note or a return address. So they think that whoever sent the wallet to him was out there living in this weird concrete house in the woods. In our third spot today, we have the other hikers. Sometimes the strangest things out there can be other humans. This story was submitted by Retroverted Uterus. Very interesting name, but okay, you do you. So they were out camping and hiking with their dog and a friend. On the first day, it was a pretty normal hike and camp out. They even camped out next to another family. The next day, that's when they encountered two really strange men. They were hiking when all of a sudden his dog started to go nuts. He was barking at the men and normally it's a very friendly dog. The men then approached them and started asking them some really strange questions like, is it just you two? How long are you guys going to be camping at the spot? Do you do any shooting or anything? Did you bring an ax to cut your own firewood? It seems like they were trying to suss them out, see if they were carrying any weapons. What also was strange is that these men were incredibly clean for having hiked 50 miles and camped out for a few days. And they didn't have anything with them, just a small fanny pack. So that right there was a huge red flag to them. When they finally set up camp, they caught the two men watching them and lurking around their campsite. Thankfully, nothing happened, but they for sure thought that these two men were going to murder them. In our second spot today, we have the abandoned campsite. This next dude is no stranger to the wilderness. He often conducts a number of environmental surveys and those frequently take place in isolated areas of the wilderness. 
According to him, the creepiest thing that he had ever come across was an abandoned campsite. It was clearly several years old, but everything was still intact. Uh, they had a tent, sleeping bags, pillows, cooking utensils, firewood pile, etc. It's like they decided to walk away and never went back for their things. Or they got dragged off by a bear and eaten alive. And in our number one spot today, we have the shrine. So two friends were out on a midnight stroll on a beach when they came across a weird shrine. There was a blanket laid out on the sand with plants surrounding it. On the blanket was a collection of weird things, from a mirror to a bunch of seashells and some candles. Then there was a plate there with some slices of fruit on it. It literally looked like a ritual took place there where they made an offering to something. Now, being pretty drunk, the two decided to fool around with the shrine. They touched the mirror and moved some of the candles. The next day, paranormal activity started happening in their home. Sounds of distorted voices could be here coming from within the walls of their home, and they often felt as if someone was watching their every move. They think that whatever was summoned that night on the beach followed them home and is now haunting them. Number 10, Driscoll Hotel, Austin. While there are many reportedly haunted hotels in Texas, this one seems to top many lists for the most ghostly activity. Most of this seems to stem from the very chilling stories of room 525. In the 1880s, there was a young couple that was having their wedding at the hotel, or at least that was the plan. The groom got cold feet and left the bride at the altar. Now heartbroken, she ran upstairs to their suite, room 525, and took her own life. And it said she still walks the halls in her long white gown. But that isn't the end of the story. Because in 1991, another bride was spurned at the altar, and after going on a shopping spree with the groom's stolen credit card, she too returned to room 525 and took her own life. Since then, guests have seen her carrying a pistol and walking into the room, all without ever opening the door. So don't stay in room 525 or you may never check out. There's also an eerie painting that's said to be inhabited by the spirit of a young girl, the daughter of a senator, whose expression seems to change on its own. People who view the painting have said that they feel like they were floating off of the ground, though they remained on the floor. They also say that their equilibrium and balance was off for a few hours after looking at her. In our ninth spot today, we have a pile of animal bones. This next individual was out on a walk with some friends when they stumbled upon a huge pile of animal bones. Now, they live in Ireland. They were hiking up a mountain in rural Ireland, and they said that there's no predatory animals there. So the only thing that could have gathered all these animal bones and put them in a pile would be humans. Not only that, but upon further investigation, they noticed that they were a bunch of different animal bones. It wasn't just from one animal. There were bones of sheep, rodents, even dog and cat bones. So my question is, why would somebody collect these bones and what were they using it for? Coming in at number eight, we have the Marfa lights in, you guessed it, the town of Marfa. While there is so much beauty in the area and plenty of non-spooky reasons to visit, the main tourist attraction to this quaint little town are floating, sourceless lights that seem to change color and even move in the night sky. Many visitors make the journey at all times of year to see the lights, and there's even a yearly festival made in their honor. Reported since 1883 by people of all ages and professions, no one knows what these floating orbs are. They appear at random, but usually in the same area of the sky, and since there's so much open space and low light pollution, it's perfect for stargazing, or seeing spooky orbs, I guess. <laughs> some say that these lights are UFOs, some say spirits, and others think that they're just headlights. All that I know is that if I see a mysterious floating orb, I'm going the other way. Number seven, Woman Hollering Creek, San Antonio. Said to be the home of La Llorona, or the Weeping Woman, this creepy creek leaves anyone who visits with a sense of dread. As the story goes, La Llorona was a woman who was distraught that her once doting, affectionate husband left her for another woman. And after confronting him and leaving the confrontation with cuts and bruises, she waded into the water, dressed in her best clothes, and drowned herself in the creek right after doing the same to the rest of her family. Her chilling screams for her children can be heard all the way from the highway. 
giving her and the creek its very apt name. Many people have felt themselves being drawn towards the water by ghostly voices, and some have even been tugged towards the bank of the creek. Perhaps it's La Llorona looking for her next victim. The screams heard and feelings of being pulled into the water have mostly been reported by younger people, making this all the more terrifying given what La Llorona did. Number 6. El Paso High School Now, when you're thinking of haunted places, a school isn't exactly the first place that comes to mind, but this one has quite a story. In 1985, the graduating class received their yearbooks, and when basking in the nostalgia of their group photo, they noticed something odd. A woman who no one could identify was in the picture with them. Now, obviously, that would be quite concerning. <laughs> I know I'd be freaked out if there was someone I'd never seen before standing next to me in a picture. The blurry apparition still has not been identified to this day, but some think it's a student who fell from a window years before who never got to graduate. I say give her the diploma. She's already in the yearbook. Sticking in El Paso, in our number 5 spot is the Plaza Theatre Performing Arts Center. As someone who loves the theatre, I try to see as many shows as I can, but I think I'll skip visiting this theatre, no matter how good the production is. Built in 1930 as a movie house, demolished for a parking lot in the late 80s and rebuilt as a live theatre space, this building has seen many, many changes, but some things have stayed constant throughout its history. Many workers of the building have reported seeing a man in one of the box seats, in a tuxedo, smoking a cigarette. One crew member recalls seeing him after turning on the stage lights, sitting alone in the box, as though he'd been there for hours already before the lights came on. And when she saw the smoking man, he turned to her and said, We all have our time to die, and then threw himself headfirst over the balcony, vanishing before he could hit the ground. A former vice president of the theater also recalls seeing a ghostly girl bouncing a ball in the aisles of the theater and always staring. He also noticed that there was a rag doll that seemed to appear and disappear on its own, moving to locations that it couldn't have without someone's help. Even locked doors didn't seem to stop it from appearing in the projection booth. Number 4. Yorktown Memorial Hospital Established in 1951, this abandoned hospital has been named one of the most haunted places in America. And since over 2,000 patients are said to have died within its walls before it shuttered its doors in 1992, I can see why. Reports of apparitions of people in hospital gowns running through the corridors or hiding in rooms are numerous, along with moving wheelchairs, disembodied voices, and footsteps. But there are some who have even more chilling stories. While exploring the halls and rooms that have remained largely untouched since its closure, some ghost hunters have been touched, had their clothes tugged on, or even pushed to the ground while being given a ghostly warning. Some of the spirits are believed to be that of patients who had illegal medical experiments performed on them and lost their lives in the process, making for a very vengeful ghost. Number 3. The Screaming Bridge in Arlington On the night of February 4, 1961, six from the local high school were taking a drive after seeing a movie earlier in the evening. While driving down Bedford Road toward the rail crossing bridge, which had mysteriously been burned down a few years previous, only rebuilt earlier that year, they were startled by another car reversing and honking its horn wildly. This caused the driver to speed up out of fear and, not realizing that the bridge was out, the car careened over the edge and crashed into the other side of the ravine. Unfortunately, three of them lost their lives that night, and their screams of terror can still be heard by anyone traveling the renamed Greenbelt Road. The saddest part of this story is that the car that startled them was being driven by a man who had just barely avoided going over the edge of the broken bridge himself, and he was reversing and honking to warn them of the danger ahead. The entire area, now known as Death Crossing, is now blocked off and no traffic travels through. At number 2 on our list, we have La Carafe in Houston. This historic bar, built originally as a bakery in 1860, has been serving patrons for decades. But many come not only for the drinks, but for a paranormal experience. Bartenders and visitors alike have seen apparitions of a hulking man walking upstairs and hearing his giant footsteps pacing the floor. No one knows who this may be, but some say he died there from some nefarious means. The former manager of the bar can also be seen staring out of the top floor window, looking over his patrons and ensuring they're having a good time. And he seems a bit more friendly. <laughs> However, there are some that report the sounds of a body being dragged across the floor above, but when the sound is followed, nothing's there. Makes you wonder what happened upstairs. And since it's one of the oldest buildings in the city that's been in continuous use, it's become a tourist hotspot and a historical site. Personally, I won't be stopping in for a drink anytime soon, no matter how good the cocktails are. 
And finally, number one, the Alamo. While students are taught to remember the Alamo, they don't really teach about all of the spirits who can never forget. In the infamous battle, thousands of soldiers lost their lives, and many were dumped into mass graves and others left to rot out in the sun. So it makes sense that you'd have some pissed off ghosts wandering the ground. There have been countless reports of soldier apparitions walking with weapons in hand, taking their usual patrol, and even full platoons screaming and charging into battle. Even in the afterlife, they couldn't get away from war, and so they continue to fight their invisible enemy. There are also accounts of a small blonde haired boy hiding in multiple places where the gift shop now stands, so make sure to pick up your haunted keychains. While the buildings are beautiful to look at and the area is interesting to explore, the history can leave one with a haunting feeling, and with all those spirits around, I'd be careful touring here, especially at night.